Hello dear students, welcome back once again to another interesting session of learning English literature. In this session we are going to talk about a very famous poem written by Robert Frost, The Road Not Taken. Before we read the text and understand it, let's talk about the author. Robert Frost was an American poet. His work was initially published in England before it was published in America. He is highly regarded for his realistic depictions of rural life and his command of American colloquial speech. Frost was honoured frequently during his lifetime, receiving four Pulitzer Prizes for poetry. He became one of America's rare public literary figures, almost an artistic institution. He was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal in 1960 for his poetical works. Now let me tell you something about the poem The Road Not Taken. It was first published in 1916 and it shows Frost at his best as a pastoral who combines rustic simplicity with hidden indirect and clarity of style and language. Now after talking about the background of the poem, let's have a look at the poem The Road Not Taken. It has five stanzas so let's begin with the first stanza. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveller, long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth. Here the speaker describes his position. He has been out for walking in the woods and comes in between the diversion of two roads. He stands there looking as far down each one as he can see. He would like to try out both, but is that possible? So he had a doubt if he could do that. So therefore, he continues to look down the roads for a long time, trying to make his decision about which road to take. So many a times it happens with us also. When we are given choices, we get confused and we take our time to choose one and it's important to take time. It's very important to be careful while taking any decision in life. The second stanza then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear Though, as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. He looked down the first one to where it bent in the undergrowth and then the second one. And he decided to take the other path because it seemed to have less travel than the first. But then he goes on to say that they actually were very similarly worn. The second one that he took seems less travelled but as he thinks about it, he realises that they were really about the same. Not exactly the same but only about the same. So he was not able to decide what should he do. That is why he stood there for a longer period of time. The third stanza. And both that morning equally lay. In leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted 
if I should ever come back. The third stanza continues with the cogitation about the possible differences between the two roads. He had noticed that the leaves were both fresh fallen on them both and had not been walked on. But then again claims that maybe he would come back and also walk the first one sometimes. But he doubted if he would be able to do that because in life one thing leads to another and time is short. So if you look back and decide to start your journey again, it becomes little difficult. So it's very important to be careful initially. Because many people regret later. The fourth stanza and the last one. I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And I, I took the one less travelled by. And that has made all the difference. In this poem, the word difference is taken in a positive way. But there is nothing in the poem that suggests that this difference signals a positive outcome. The speaker could not offer such information because he has not lived the difference yet. The other word that leads non-discerning readers astray is the word sigh. By taking difference to mean a positive difference, they think that the sigh is one of nostalgic relief. However, a sigh can also mean regret. There is the oh dear kind of sigh, but also the what a relief kind of sigh. Which one is it? We do not know. If it is the relief sigh, then the difference means the speaker is glad he took the road he did. If it is the regret sigh, then the difference would not be good. And the speaker would be sighing in regret. So I hope the poem is clear to everyone. Now let's have a look at the title of the poem, The Road Not Taken. The road is the symbol of the choice made by us in life. Many times we regret the choice we make, but what is done once cannot be undone. Man regrets for what he has denied himself in life, rather than what he has chosen. Hence. The poet has given his poem the title, The Road Not Taken. The word road not only means a way, it also means journey or a stage of journey. Here road does not signify any ordinary road, but functions as a metaphor of a vital decision in our life. Now. Let's have a look at the poetic devices used in the poem. The first one is imagery. Let's have a look at this line, two roads diverged in a yellow wood. Now in this phrase, there are these two images, diverged and yellow. These words, I mean, two, the words two roads diverged evokes the sight sense. There is an obvious road that splits into two completely different roads. Another word that evokes sight is yellow. The yellow is describing the road again. So there are two different roads, sunny and bright. To where it bent into the undergrowth. Now there is one major image evoking word and that is undergrowth. Undergrowth sets an image of grass and overgrow trees and greenery. One of the paths winds on into a world of green. So you all can visualize 
certain images are formed in your mind when you read this poem and that is what makes the poem understandable to the reader now let's have a look at the another device used in the poem by the poet its personification it means to give human attributes to non humans the line because it was grassy in wanted wear in the third stanza yes it is an example of personification because the poet says that the road wanted wear while we all know that a road cannot think and would not have any desire at all but here the poet has given human attributes to road it's only because the poet wants us to make us feel so that we understand it in a better way next we have metaphor the road is a metaphor for the journey of life the two roads are compared to the two choices in life and the poet compares himself to a traveler the undergrowth at the end of one of the roads is the obstacles and the challenges it's also hard to see what the future held for him the grass on one of the roads had hardly been stepped on which means not many people had chosen that kind of life so yes the poet has used metaphor in his poem the road not taken now let me tell you children he has also used extended metaphor in the poem he uses the extended metaphor of roads to represent the idea of the choices we make in our lives throughout the poem he uses the roads to represent the difference between making the easy choice and making the more difficult one and we know that he was in a dilemma he was perplexed he was not able to decide so that is why he stood there analyzing both the roads for a longer period of time and later obviously he had to decide so he chose one road and started walking on that path the poet has also used symbols in this poem something that means more than what it is to convey an idea the road not taken by robert frost i mean i shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence two roads diverged in a wood and i i took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference so the two roads symbolize life choices that resulted in a large difference in the kind of experience one knows so to convey an idea the poet has used these two roads as symbols now at the end let's talk about the message of this poem which is very important to understand robert frost poem the road not taken seems to hold out the mortal that life is a continuous journey full of divergence now and then the important thing is to move on without looking back whether the choice of paths taken was right or wrong the right or wrong are relative terms we cannot get everything in life we desire for and have to make choices i'm sure you all do that whatever direction in our life takes is determined by the choice made by us in the journey of life one can seldom come back to 
travel the roads not taken earlier. So that was all about the poem, The Road Not Taken. I hope the message of the poem is quite clear to everyone. So that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Take good care of yourself. Bye.